what kind of world do I want to live in? I think about this question a lot. For our generation and for specifically my group of people, which is refugees, the circumstances might dismantle any vision of the future that we have. You're trying to rebuild, you're trying to make a future for yourself, and then the climate related disaster comes and you start again. It's not about how it's affecting you now, it's about how it's affecting you your entire life. First step to understand is that we're all a part of it. None of us are going to be left out by the crisis. We're at a stage where if we don't act now, really there won't be very much left. There are generations that will never see certain things that we grew up seeing in real life. We have to start treating this like the emergency it is. To achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have to go from an intention to a serious commitment. Business leaders really need to rethink how they conduct their business and invest in creating systems that are climate friendly. The action I would like to see is accountability. Structures being put in place where countries aren't just asked to do something, but they're kept accountable to the decisions that they make. There has to be that strong collaboration between government, between corporations, between youth activists to drive change forward. The world I would want to live in is a world where imagining the future is not a privilege. I want to live in a world where people do not give up on hope, hope that a positive change is possible. The fact that you're listening today means that you are willing to make a change. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone here with us today, joining us at the Sustainable Development Initiative Summit, SDS21. I'm Rohan Ramakrishnan. I'm your moderator for today, and I'll be taking, through, taking you through a very interesting panel session on the future of travel and tourism. Today's session will focus on quantifying the payoff of sustainable tourism. What this means, right? very shortly. While stakeholders are increasingly convinced that sustainable tourism is beneficial and necessary for a robust and resilient tourism sector, quantifying the long-term payoff for, for payoff for destinations and businesses is still a fundamental challenge. How can the latest innovations be leveraged to expand aviation and tourism economic value while working towards net zero by 2050? To enrich our thoughts around this is an excellent panel of speakers. We've got with us here today, dialing in from LA, João Ricardo Mendes, who's the global CEO of Herb in Brazil. We've got Keith Tan from Singapore, who's the chief executive of the Singapore Tourism Board. We've got Sally Darby, chief executive officer of Travelist at the United Kingdom. And of course, Silvia Garrigo, who's the senior VP and chief ESG of, uh, officer of Royal Caribbean Group. Now, to kick off, I'll get each of them to give you a quick introduction, who they are, what do they do, and what does your organization aspire to do? Let's start off with you, Keith. Hi everyone, my name is Keith Tan. I'm the Chief Executive of the Singapore Tourism Board, uh, which is a, an NTO. Uh, we, don't, we don't just do marketing, but we do a lot of industry development, business development, and capability development, including in technology. Uh, Sylvia, would you like to go next? Thank you for that, Keith. Sorry, Sylvia, could you turn on your... 
Okay, sorry about that. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I'm very happy to join this very important um, discussion. My name is Sylvia Garrigo. I am the Senior Vice President and Chief Environmental, Social, and Governance Officer for the Royal Caribbean Group, which is based in Miami, Florida. We sail to over 500 um, destinations all over the world. Ciao, would you, would you like to go next? Thank you for that, Sylvia. Everyone, uh, my name is Joan Ricardo. I'm from Brazil. I'm the global CEO of Herb. Uh, we are a um, marketplace and a technology-based firm in Brazil and Montreal and Porto. Fantastic. Thank you, Virajal. Sally, now over to you. Thank you, Rohan. I'm Sally Davy. I'm the chief executive of Travelist. It's a nonprofit founded by the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, in partnership with Booking.com, Skyscanner, Trip.com Group, TripAdvisor, and Visa to help travelers everywhere make better choices for people and planet. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, we're going to kick off the session now. Um, but before that, um, you can ask live questions, right, to all of you. And you can do it via top link. If you've joined via top link, you can just post it in the chat um, and we'll pick it up and, and then look at them at the end of the session. So now to kick off, we're going to look at three teams today. The first team is going to be on the importance of sustainability. And then we're going to look at data and metrics and how they play a role um, in uh, driving forward this initiative around sustainability. And of course, as always, we need to look at the challenges and we need to quantify them and and come up with solutions, innovative solutions, sustainable solutions, resilient, resilient solutions. So to kick off, the first question here that I have for today is, why sustainability is important for this sector, this specific sector of aviation, travel, and tourism? And um, COVID has impacted sustainability's role in tourism now more than ever. Prior to this, um, the focus was on over-tourism, uh, protecting natural cultural assets like for example, Machu Picchu, right? Um, reducing the carbon footprint. Has this changed? And what are the new challenges for this sector of aviation, travel, and tourism in the post-COVID vaccine passport era? Sally, let's start off with you. Thanks, Rohan. So to summarize, yeah, no, I suppose, uh, yeah, the question is, are the challenges still the same or are they materially different? And I think the simplest answer is they are all still the same. The environmental, socioeconomic and governance issues all remain arguably with more urgency now in this um, after the last 18 months, not only of experiencing the catastrophe of the pandemic, but also many, many environmental disasters the world over, many of which have been experienced in very popular tourism destinations. So yeah. we are now seeing a greater level of urgency and awareness, not only around the issues, but around the absolute critical need for our industry, our sector, and the entire system to come together, to work together with aligned action to tackle those issues, to protect the destinations and people who are the very core of, of tourism, of why we travel, and ensure that we really are building towards a, a resilient and successful, thriving future for our sector. Right. Th thank you for that, Sally. And I'd like to bring what you said about, you know, um, economies and governments. And, and, and this leads me to you, Keith. And, and I'd I'm, I'm really like to know, what are your views on this? And um, in your capacity as the chief executive of the Singapore Tourism Board, um, how, do you, how is Singapore viewing it? What is Singapore's outlook? You know, it's always interesting to, to see. Singapore is always taking the first step forward in everything. Well, what is the view that you could share with us? Well, sustainability is a key plank for, for our economic and national agenda. So earlier this year, for example, the Singapore government unveiled the Singapore Green Plan 2030 with clear targets across the whole of the economy, the whole of society. And part of the work that we do at the Singapore Tourism Board then is to align uh, uh, the, the work and the efforts of the tourism sector so that they fit and support uh, the work of the larger whole of nation effort towards our green 
green plan mm -hmm. towards targets for mm -hmm. carbon reduction, emissions reduction, uh, waste management, and so on. So, so we, right. we, I think it is important as an as, as an NTO for us. We don't set, we don't create solutions. We don't look at uh, or, or this company or that company and recommend it to other companies in the tourism sector. But what we then do is yeah. we set ambition. We set ambition mm -hmm. right. We, we we lay out the challenges, and in this, in a sense, we also tell the com the companies in the tourism sector in Singapore: if you don't do this, what are the opportunity costs? Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's right. the way we right. frame it here in Singapore. Right. That's fantastic because then you'll capture the entire value chain, right, from from mm -hmm. first mile to last mile, and and that's interesting because when we come to Sylvia, um, you know, Royal Caribbean Group is one of the largest cruise operators in the world. And um, you are the, at the very center, at the heart of the movement, right? Uh, between um, um, individuals like Keith, who are driving this, this the, the, the regulation or the promotion around uh, moving towards um, sustainable solutions, similar to the plan that they just launched, right? Sing Singapore Green Plan. Uh, what are the initiatives that, that you are to, that you would do as an operator, right? Or you would see in, in, in terms of um, being a commercial concern? How, how, how practical is it and how realistic is it? And, um, and is it still the same as before or is there really, really real change, right? Um, thank you, uh, Rohan. Um, certainly yeah. um, for a company like Royal Caribbean, whose mantra is continuous improvement, um, the lessons that we have learned through COVID-19 have been enormous. Um, yeah. our, our, our ships stop sailing. However, uh, sustainability challenges did not stop. In fact, some of them have accelerated like climate change. So when we look at our return to service, uh, which has been slow um, and, and gradual, we look at the enormous effort that it has taken and the strong collaborations that are necessary between public health agencies, local authorities, and industry organizations to establish a healthy, safe, and sustainable return to service um, has been instrumental in our ability to do that. But taking mm -hmm. a step back, you can, you can only go forward if you learn from what you've experienced, right? The, the paradigms and protocols for safety, health, and responsible tourism have changed, and so must we. There's no going back. On the contrary, mm -hmm. going, back, um, going back means that we fail to see how interconnected we are. We, all of yeah. us have, have been given a once-in-a-lifetime window into the joys and challenges that we face in each other's homes and family. Our, our, right. empathy, our empathy has increased enormously, enormously and therefore our ability to identify and understand and make commitments to cha the change of empathy yeah. have also increased. We've, give, we've been given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to fight a common er enemy. I don't think this has ever occurred in modern civilization. <laughs> yes. Right? Unified for a change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're all facing the same, the same common enemy. And if we win yeah. and we will, we know that we can work. Um, now we know that we can work together against that enemy or any challenge for the common good. And I think this is huge. So I, I would say it, it takes a village, right? It, it's it's uh, the collaboration, the, 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 the outreach and the partnerships, um, cross-sectoral partnerships, are, 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 are key to our ability to confront these challenges. Yeah. You know, and, and at Royal, what we have done, we've collaborated with partners like the World Wildlife Fund, the Global yeah. Sustainable yeah. Tourism Council, and we conduct estimation is, um, assessments to understand social, the social and environmental issues that we face today related to our operations Correct. so that we can set the, the appropriate goals and continue to earn our right to operate. Right. I mean, that's fantastic because, you know, it's just not one party playing a role. It's every single participant in that ecosystem, right? And, and the solution um, forward has to be absolutely unified. Um, and, and that's why I come to you, um, Zhao. You know, you're a platform. You're one of the biggest in Brazil or probably the biggest. And um, being in that position that you are, 
um, especially being in South America, where you have probably, I would say, the most number amount of UNESCO heritage sites, I would like to believe. Um, how, how do you see this? How do you see um, the importance of sustainability? Is it the same as before? Is it different? Um, do we need a reset? Yeah, I think I see that as a, not as a need to do think, but I must go, must do think, otherwise our core will die. And if you see the trends <laughs> after the yeah. second world war, uh, the mm -hmm. probably travel sectors, the <laughs> only sector mm -hmm. that, that correlate with technology in growth. And we didn't take advantage yeah. of that technology to improve our experience. I mean, 40% uh, of uh, queries and searches on Google every single day are, are, are doing it for the first time. Uh, if we take this um, rule for travel sectors, I would mean that 40% um, of uh, every single people that look for travel to a place every day, they are looking for a new place. Uh, unfortunately, that's not true. And I think like uh, nowadays with technology of uh, point of interest and point of interest 2.0, we can create uh, yeah. and distribute, spread out the destinies. Of course, that's go a little against machine learning nowadays, go against power law. Uh, we have a two yeah. sides, uh, strong link and weak link. And I think we should push harder for the weak link, even with rules on the search and like um, it's, it's not a it's a it's a nice problem to 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 <laughs> it's a nice problem there. Problem. <laughs> problem. Yeah. So, but com coming to you, um, Sally, based on what uh, Jawe said, you know, how how do you see it um, from your standpoint, right? Um, you are trying to drive change. Um, one of the biggest issues is the hoarding of data, you know, and um, we need and and what you've done on your end is pretty fantastic, right? It's amazing. You've managed to get all these companies together to share their data with you, something that would not have been possible five or 10 years ago. And um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, the role of data um, in, in this larger scheme of things, because before COVID, um, it would be safe to say we were embracing the fourth industrial revolution. Post COVID, I would say we are very much more a digitalized world. I mean, look at how we're speaking today. Right, and, and look at the last two or three events the forum has had. They've all been uh, digital. Prior to this, we will be taking flights, traveling all over the world to meet up and gather and speak about these important points. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more um, of, of the intersection of data in, in this role and in this role of pivoting from the old approach to the new approach. Thanks, Rohan. I think you're absolutely yep. right. We're at a pivot point in the history of our sector and, and in the history of mankind. And, and so much of what yep. the other uh, speakers have mentioned really resonates. Um, but you're right. I, we have seen through Travelis this incredible turning point um, in the coming together of these huge brands, competitive entities to collaborate for the greater good with this absolute shared yep. commitment to the fact that sustainability is a shared incredibly yeah. complex challenge that we are only going to resolve Shut, yeah. and address mm -hmm. together and it all starts with mm -hmm. data it yeah. all starts with aligning on what do we need to measure how do we collect this data together share it openly because nobody mm -hmm. owns this data it must be completely accessible it must be ubiquitous yeah. available to everybody across yeah. all levels of the sector to make better decisions travelist is very heavily focused on on empowering consumers to make better choices um, in particular, but of course that is just yes. one part of the system. So ultimately there is yeah. a big theme here about collectively gathering, distributing data in a clear, consistent and trusted way that's going to empower all of us to be making the choices that are right. so important and so critical to address these issues. And we actually have some yes. 
exciting news to share today and, and hear for the first oh, time, fantastic. which is that um, we will be announcing formally later today that Google has joined the Travelers Coalition as a partner also, which is an incredible yeah. indication, um, again, to the fact that this is a shared collaborative effort. Everybody is getting behind this mission. And um, and I think, you know, Google not only That's fantastic, yeah. brings that, that fantastic additional uh, weight to, yeah. to the coalition and its approach, but also that broader lens. We have to remember that this is not just about travel and tourism, of course. We are part of the bigger picture, and Google helps with yeah. their data and their lens knit us into the role that we play in achieving global sustainability outcomes. So we are clearly at a really critical moment in our... Critical point. Exactly. And, and, I'm, and I've heard all the points that each of you have made, and I come to this question about um, incentivization. Right? There has to be some incentivization in place in order for people to pivot, in order for people to re-strategize, to re-optimize, to have a different look. And then, and, and Keith, you know, STB, Singapore Tourism Board, um, we've taken a very interesting approach, right? The approach has been more towards awareness, uh, uh, towards sustainability and, and creating incentives, right? Mm. And, um, you know, one of the more interesting things that you've done is um, to develop a tourism, um, tourism data the, uh, dashboards, right? And um, what's happening here is that you're encouraging these stakeholders to share this data across, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and there's some form of incentivization that, that, that's mm -hmm. provided. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the Singapore model um, for everyone's benefit. Well, we believe that data is vital for making smarter business decisions. This was true uh, before COVID, and yeah. obviously it's, it will be true mm -hmm. after COVID as well. And so this journey of democratizing yeah. data so that our stakeholders in the tourism industry can make smarter decisions, we started yeah. that journey uh, several years ago. But obviously COVID has made this more pertinent because now that all the companies in our sector are struggling for survival, they found it a lot yeah. more um, useful and valuable to share data with each other uh, so that they yeah. can come up with collaborative solutions. Now, how, and this applies whether or, not they're, whether or not they're concerned about sustainability. Where sustainability comes in mm -hmm. is in terms of understanding consumer behavior, understanding how, I, I think what we've tried to do uh, is to share more data from our perspective as, 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 as STB, but also now encouraging our, our stakeholders in the industry to share more data on the preferences, the mindsets, the expectations of consumers who travel with sustainability as a key consideration. Yeah. How then can we adapt our products, our experiences, uh, our technologies to suit those expectations and demands? So that's one thing, sharing data about um, uh, creating platforms to share data about the consumer. Number two, I think it's also important then to share data and um, best practices across different companies in the sector. Sometimes that has to be government uh, enabled. There are some good sustainability related solutions that individual companies themselves won't do. For example, yeah. something which we are pushing very hard as we develop new tourism precincts is district cooling systems. Now, that is not yeah. something that an individual hotel will do, but it, this, it makes right. sense if it does it together with a few other hotels or maybe um, a, a, a convention center and a few hotels yes. or an attraction. But that needs to be mediated by, by, by government. Now, how can we share right. data? First of all, we want to incentivize these practices, but then also to encourage, and uh, in order for us to encourage these practices, we need to share a lot more data and information about why these things make sense. Uh, both in right. the short run, but obviously in the long run as well. Long run. Ja, ja, what is your? Thank you for that. Kita, that was very, very interesting and 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 informative. And I think Ja, I'll just go over to you, and I want to ask you based on what Kita told you. It's got some very interesting points there about democrat, democratizing data. You know, um, looking at renewables um, and more cleaner solutions um, as an as an as a supplemental alternative approach to to what is already being what what is being done. And um, what are your thoughts on that? What, what, what do you think, right, from, aside from a consumer standpoint, you know, there's also the corporate aspect of it, right? Um, you've got shareholders, um, you've got shareholders who expect returns. There's now this element of ESGs as well, um, and a certain level of reporting that's required. Now, but what, what, where, where do you see this coming in as an obstacle? 
towards all the things that we've just mentioned, right? The sharing, the democratizing, the incentivizing. I'm sure it kills the profits and shareholders want to see profits. Yeah, I do believe that the first step to solve any problem, <laughs> the first step really is recognize that we have one. And we are in the industry that was one of the um, bad actors for for the environment yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I, I don't I, I don't believe that we need to rely on governments to make things happen. Uh, of course mm-hmm. like sharing data and have a let's say a knowledge base or or, or a, a trustable data uh, data lake would be also but um, most importantly, mm-hmm. it's like set up some rules, like uh, for the big companies as us, as booking the OTAs, the companies that, that uh, generate uh, uh, and create demands, uh, maybe set some, I mean, when I mean rules, I don't mean bureaucratic rules, but okay, let's foment <laughs> the, the yeah. if you see like a, your, your, your place, your rule uh, it's a beautiful place, Kuala Lumpur, uh, and you should receive yeah. like a 10,000 visitors that if you receive, like if people knew the, the beauty of your place, but uh, people before yeah. queries that they, 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 have, they have to be impacted somehow. And uh, yeah. we are very good connected with those billion dollar, billion user channels. So if we yeah. all put a kind of a good pressure for the good uh, with this data, all together to show it's going to be this because of that. And I think we can create a lot of uh, new spots. And that's going to be there for the environment, like a spread out instead of a concentrate. Right. So basically you're talking about um, creating new routes, um, sort of sort of reducing that over oversupply at a certain, over uh, oversupply, over demand at a certain location, carving that out and, opening new locations and new routes um, to sort of spread out uh, the impact that's being caused. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, not exactly uh, 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 decrease demand. I mean, uh, I don't know if, uh, if you are Real Madrid or Barcelona, but uh, on Real Madrid field, <laughs> they, they, aren't, they can't play yeah. every day on the grass. They, they, they take care of the grass on the Barcelona yeah. You know, they can't play every day on the grass. We have a, we just, unfortunately, um, my country has just one good, good example of mm-hmm. that, which is Fernando de Noronha. I went a very, very, very careful way. And I'm yeah. kind of a proud of that. And I wish we have more case to, to, to tell you. So find the balance is the, is the good thing and we have the, best minds and best person to, to make it happen like that. We don't need <laughs> many more resources yeah. that we already have. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for that, job. Sylvia, it's always interesting um, when I come to you because, um, you know, in a, in a previous life, I worked in finance, right? And today here I am in, in, in this space. And I do understand the difficulties of running a, bu- to, of running a business, right? You have to balance everything out. Um, you need more data. You need more data to make more money, and you need more data to build up your your your, your capability, your capacity. We live in a digital world, but at the same time, you also have to comply with regulators. You got to comply with reporting standards. You got ESGs, right? And 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 at the same time as well, um, you have uh, corporate shareholders that you need to keep happy, right? Um, but at the same time, you also got to keep the consumers happy. So as a business, as a large business like yours, right? Where is the equilibrium? Where is that sweet spot um, in, in, in ensuring that you can actually uh, move forward and not only remain sustainable, um, it's also remaining sustainable from a commercial perspective, right? Without losing any revenue. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's functioning in a way that I think we are all called to do, which is to work towards the collective good, to use data for good. That, that is what yeah. COVID has called us to do. If we if we achieve, we live in a much more transparent, open source 
commercial um, reality as well as uh, society. Um, in, in order to, which what our, our, our shareholders wanted, to go back to sailing in a healthy and safe manner, we had to think beyond and, and work beyond the, world, the Royal Caribbean world. So, so we, yeah. we created a healthy sail panel, which brought together the best scientific minds, um, regulators, and even our peers to create a number of protocols that would ensure a safe vacation experience for our guests, our employees, and the communities we visit. Because you can imagine with all the destinations we go to, it's not just creating safe, safe ships, but it's also ensuring That's right. that we safely visit communities where we don't bring disease or, or harm. Or, or we health and safety. Right. We don't burden their hospital systems with our guests. So it's it's very important to work together and 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 create the, the protocols that would then serve as a means to create metrics and, and other data points that we could not only use to ensure the safety of our crew, our guests and our employees and communities, but that we can also share um, publicly so that others can learn how our floating cities have been designed mm -hmm. to be safer than, than Main Street. We have had a fraction, yeah. a, a very small fraction of incidents on our ships. And that's because yeah. of all the, the technology that we're using, uh, including digital technology. So we have introduced um, tools where the, the, the check-in experience, um, safety drills, um, in health information, and, and protocols all are available to our customers and our guests um, on their on their digital devices, and so this is the foundation of what we needed to go to the market and say we are ready to sail. We are ready to sail with safety and the safety and health of our guests and communities um, in crew in mind, so that we don't get to a point where we have we have a massive outbreak or we have a, a massive crisis that will interrupt service. Right, I think that's fantastic, Sylvia, because where I'm going to go to it, where, what we could say, right, to frame that up is that we've seen this sort of sea level of awareness, right? And, and you could see by what Sally just mentioned earlier with that partnership that, you know, Google's now on the table. And, and that, that's the kind of momentum that you would never have seen before. And, and that's why I come to you, um, Sally, and I ask you, um, do you think, um, what should this debate look like? If you were to reframe this whole debate around um, sustainability, especially in this particular sector of aviation, travel and tourism, what should that debate focus on? I know um, Keith mentioned one element, renewables, that's fantastic. Singapore has had their solarizing Singapore years ago, they started it. Um, you know, Sylvia, have you spoken about healthcare and safety? Jao has thought about saying, taking a whole different approach, you know, um, um, that we've not taken before, a more humanistic approach, right, compared to what we've seen before, um, after wars and things like that. But where, what do you see uh, the debate looking like, you know? Is it, a, it, it, it is not an option, right, as you'd like to say, but what, what exactly um, would it look like? I think these are all such interesting points and, you know, framing this as a debate, I think is a, is a really interesting point in itself. Is this still a debate? Yeah. And if it is, then maybe <laughs> the question we should be asking ourselves is what does the unsustainable version look like? Because I think that yeah. gives us a pretty clear picture of where we don't want to be and in mirror image where we yeah. do want to be. And so much of, of what has been talked about, looking back at the last 18 months, both with COVID and environmental disasters around the world, has been catastrophic in, on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Exactly as Sylvia yeah. has said, we have learned so much and we have had an opportunity to rethink yeah. the new normal. And I think some of the, the really key lessons we have learned, we've learned what exponential challenges look like and how to address them. We have to yeah. go fast. We don't have time. We have to address this head on. Secondly, mm -hmm. these are 
global problems. I loved in the, the video introduction to this session, um, one of the young <laughs> leaders said, none of us will be left out of these crises. And it's such a poignant uh, reminder that these mm -hmm. are global complex issues that, remind, that require full global alignment and thinking in our approaches. And I think the yeah. third point, which I think is where we should really think about taking kind of hope and positivity and optimism forward, is the right. amount of adaptation we have seen within our sector, pivots in markets that were heavily inbound to domestic um, businesses, yeah. for example, and indeed uh, properties uh, making themselves available in the absence of guests to um, critical mm -hmm. frontline workers. This level of adaptability and reaction is, has just, I think, brought out a level of human spirit that we are going to need in the next 10 years to achieve, you know, obviously our net zero commitments. Right. And development goals and so i think when we bring this specifically back to tourism and, and you know what is on the horizon for us you've mentioned aviation a few times aviation is obviously yeah. a massively hard to abate part of our industry but there is yeah. phenomenal opportunity on the horizon with technological innovation notably around sustainable aviation Absolutely. that are going to bridge us between where we are today to where we get we need to get to for net zero again Correct. not something that the industry alone is going to drive or certainly not just customer demand we do see significant data around the consumer demand for greener choices of flights and, and our partners at skyscanner have vast amounts of data 11 million travelers chose greener choices flights <laughs> on skyscanner in 2019 yeah. the demand is there but we also we need the whole picture the whole system to come together we need the the infrastructure yeah. we need the regulatory environment the investment we need the industry aligned in its approaches we need consumers demanding this. So it's up to us to, to bring that whole yeah. um, environment together to make it possible. Together. It is possible. Right. Right. So basically, right, um, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here, right? Um, there are a number of people that make up this value system and uh, this, this whole supply chain right now. You've got the operators, you've got the industry regulators, um, you have the tech giants who come in and provide the infrastructure. Now, the problem here is getting consumers to actually share their data, right? I mean, the new releases of the iPhones, right? They just released the new iPhones a day or two ago. And the new MacBooks are coming out um, probably in October, as they always do. And now you have this feature where you don't have to share any data at all, right, on your, on your device. And don't you think that's going to be a big obstacle moving forward? Because the entire drivers, right, and users of this entire value chain and system is actually the very same people who don't want to share data. So very quickly, before we move to the Q&A, can I get each one of you to tell me your thoughts on activating consumer data sharing? Would you like to go first, Keith? Well, um, it's not an easy question, but ultimately we have mm -hmm. to respect yeah. consumer preference, right? And yeah. so from uh, STB is very concerned uh, about getting a good view of consumer preferences. And therefore we have to find ways around, ar around the constraints you've mentioned. So for example, we work with credit card, financial institutions, the credit financial, card companies, yeah, yeah. we work with airlines. So we, we gather data across a whole different array of, of, of um, sources to give us a, a good sense of what uh, consumers want to do and what they, they prefer and, and give us yes. clues that help us predict and make smarter choices for them. And then we also then feed this back into the into the industry so that we create a virtuous cycle where yeah. where where we use data in a in a in a responsible manner responsible. to help us yes, make good decisions, exactly. to help the businesses make smarter and wiser decisions about their customers and consumers yes. as well. I think the crux for us as an NTO is creating those platforms that amalgamate yes. the data, anonymize the data because we need to do that as well, yes. and then push it yes. out in a way that makes sense to 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 the stakeholders yep right right i mean that's a, that's a fantastic uh, uh response there keith and, and and you know it's brilliant you know consumer consumer preference and and this is where sylvia and uh Jao, you are both in an in an absolutely brilliant position to make that change because um you have the platform you have the user base right um from a brick and mortar perspective with yourself sylvia Jao, with yourself on the totally digital front and, um, you know, if it comes back to what Sally has said earlier, where everybody has to play their part, 
there is a great opportunity right now and there's a sea level of awareness. And, and, and it's either now or never, you know, we are at that point of time in history where we really, 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 really uh, need to move forward on this front. And just very quickly, Sylvia, and then thereafter, Zhao, um, just let me know, what are your thoughts on, on, on getting your consumers um, to readily share their data? And how do you tell them to share this data um, for the greater good, uh, when they were probably going to be thinking that you're holding this data to profiteer? That, that I think, um, Ruhan, that continues to be a significant challenge. Yeah. Um, we, we are all pretty good at collecting data regarding our NPV and, and guest mm -hmm. satisfaction. That is, you know, the survey world that existed even before um, digital mm -hmm. technology came to, came to fruition. Um, yep. I think new, new approaches, however, are, are, are needed and new approaches that have arisen as a result of all different stakeholders and actors fighting against the same enemy. So it, we, right. we have to ramp up our work with multiple stakeholders on the shore, not just local authorities, local mayors, but also local um, business owners, um, leaders in, in, in the communities to understand what their needs are and, and how we can better protect their environment, their cultural he heritage and prevent, heritage. and prevent situations where tourism becomes a burden and, and not a benefit, right? So, sure. so that I think that needs to happen at, at the outset and then taking that data and use and, 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 and communicating it to not only uh, the, the, the leaders within our company so that we can yeah. adjust practices, so that we can adjust our protocols with our partners um, and, and also adjust our communications and, 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 um, and, and dealings with, with our guests. One of the things yes. that we have done as a result of listening to mayors, to community leaders, et cetera, is working with thousands of tour operators um, to, to become, so that they can become certified under the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. Right. right? That, that is key right. because right. these folks take the tourists into the towns. They are the ones that represent the, 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 the beauty and, and, and the heritage. Absolutely. And they are the ones that represent the desires of the leadership in the town and the people in the town so that tourism is done in a respectful um, and, and careful and responsible manner. So we are building sure. a very robust um, certification program with our tour operators and okay. others in our value chain. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sylvia. And, and Zhao, before we quickly jump into the Q&A, we're short, short of time as always. Um, quickly, maybe you could tell me, um, you know, how is it that you could play a part, you know, as a digital operator to get this data to be shared by your consumers? You know, there's all this whole issue about big data and the oligopolies and things like that. So, you know, how would you look at it from your perspective? Very briefly. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, first of all, I, I respect and I think it's an uh, important uh, step for, for the consumer uh, own their own data. And even with this issue, like I will still have a plan of data to work in on, and uh, we have a plan of data even from consumers, anonymized data that we can cross and create yeah. machine learning models that can um, improve that by 10x or 100x. So I, I yeah. think here um, now nowadays it's a, it's a problem of data. Even Sky Scanner, for instance, they have a yeah. tool, it's a B two B and also and also a data set tool, which is very very good for the whole industry, which is want to improve their airline data. And I don't feel like the the, the new rules regarding uh, consumers uh, hold their own data is bad for. Yeah. Any analysis. <laughs> That's for everyone. Right. Th thank you. Thank you so much for that, Zhao. I think I'm, I'll come back and wrap up in a bit. Um, but let's first have some Q&A. Let's have some questions. 
Um, the audience can feel free over the next 10 minutes to drop in some questions through Slido. Those of you on, on, on the forum's uh, top link uh, platform, please just drop a note into the chat. Um, I've got a couple of questions here already that's come in. Um, first one over to Keith. To Keith, this is an excellent question. I actually want to know this as well. Um, Keith, where can we get a copy of the 2030 Sustainable Plan for Singapore? <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's on the website of the Ministry of Sustainability and Environment. Let me just double check that. Sure thing. Sure thing. Uh, Ministry of Sustainability and Environment. Or you can Google. You can Google Singapore okay. Green Plan 2030. Sure thing. So the answer to that, where you can get the 2030 sustainability plan for Singapore, is to Google the Singapore Green Plan. Yeah, I'm sure there's a fantastic SEO around it. You should get it immediately. I'm going to have a look at it right away after this as well. Um, second question, right? Um, yeah, so you can, you can see. By the way, my answer is greenplan.gov.sg. You will find it there. Greenplan.gov.sg. Greenplan.gov.sg. Right. Yeah. Right. Sorry. And. Um, I've got about another five minutes to end of session. So what I'm going to do over here is that I'm going to try to quickly go through our time for these questions. Let me have a look. Travelers was pursuing sustainable behavior and changes for both. There's still a lot to do to cut plastic and energy. Okay. That's an interesting question, but that's about um, alternative sustainability. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly wrap up. Um, unfortunately, we can't take any more questions. But um, very briefly, before we go off, can, can, can I have each one of you to tell me, based on today's session, um, what do you think is the solution moving forward? Right? We've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about democratizing data. We've talked about incentivizing. We've thought of going down to the very last mile of taking the actual um, um, tourist guides and getting them certified. Um, Jao has talked about, along with Keith as well, as about con respecting consumer preference or finding a way to get these consumers to also give us data and everyone banding together. If, if you could tell me in, in one line um, what you would like to see really transpire and happen um, in, in, in the next, say, 12 months to see some radical change, what would that be? Could we start with you, um, Sally? Operating sustainably becomes the new normal and that that is made obvious by our constant and transparent reporting of the key mm -hmm. metrics and our progress towards shared goals and that the way that we address those goals is fully collaborative and aligned. New normal, yeah, wonderful. measured, aligned. Measured. Okay. Um, Sylvia, what about you? One-liner, what do you think? What do you yeah. like to see in 12 months? I, I think we have all been touched um, and, and impacted by COVID and by many of the challenges that we are facing um, in our society today, like climate change. This is sure. not something I think um, one of the, 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 the young um, gentlemen that, that spoke uh, in the introduction of this program was that um, this, these challenges touch each and every one of us. And I think yes. it calls upon each and every one of us, not just government, not just industry, but each and every one of us in our homes and in our way of life to really be aware and conscientious and conscious of our part to build a, a better and more sustainable way of life. Sustainable. Yes. Agree. Okay, thank you so much. Jao, very quickly, um, what, do, what are your thoughts? In the next 12 months, what would you like to see? Radical change. <laughs> yeah, so, huh. first of all, I'm uh, uh, sad for all of the families that lose their loved ones on this yeah. disease. And I would love to see those families uh, going to point A to point B and having some yes. fun in a good way. And, and that's what I want to see. Okay, thank you so much. And Keith, finally with you, Singapore is doing some amazing things, spearheading the development in ASEAN. Uh, what, are, what are your 12 months? Next 12 months, what would you like to see? 
Well, first of all, I agree with Zhao about travel. But in terms of sustainable yeah. <laughs> tourism, I think what what I would what we're trying to do, and and I hope that we can do something in the next twelve months, is to really create a great yeah. marketplace of solutions. There are lots of companies, lots of solution providers in waste management, water management, energy management, in sustainable construction, and so on. How yeah. do I create? And then on the other hand, I have many companies in the tourism sector who are demanding solutions, but they don't quite know. Where to go or what to do? Yes. Right? So we really want to create a great marketplace where people, yes. where, where the companies, the hotels in Singapore, for example, cruise lines, yeah. whatever it is, really come yeah. together and 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 find the solutions. And then for Singapore to be yeah. a great place for for companies with good ideas in the sustainability space to come and test bed those ideas here in Singapore. Singapore. Th thank you so much for that, Keith. It sounds very, very ex exciting, especially for me. I just live down <laughs> and I'm all coming over all the time. Um, before we wrap up, thank you so much, Sally, Keith, Sylvia, Zhao. I know you're all in different time zones um, and you've taken the time over the week, uh, last few days to talk to me in uh, different, different hours of the day. <laughs> thank you for that. To our audience, thank you so much. I will bring this session to the close. And I just want to let you know, if you want to find out more about this specific area, the forum is working with partners, right? Um, several different partners in se with several different initi initiatives um, towards sustainable tourism and metrics, all the stuff that we've been talking today. Basically, the issues and how to actually ma measure them and how we can resolve them. And this will include uh, uh, two reports, basically. Right? One of them is the data for destinations initiative, which is also the current production of, part of the current production of the 2021 travel and tourism competitors report which the forum releases various competitiveness reports right and of course um, we have the forums uh, global future council on sustainable tourism um, which works in 10 different principal areas of sustainable destinations right so that's a new another new initiative interesting initiative and you can find out all about these initiatives through your access in top link or you can go directly to the forum site and and all these initiatives within the different communities um, that are shaping the future of this world. All of it is there. And um, before I go off, thank you very, very much. And I hope um, when we meet again, all of us, whether in the forum or outside the forum, um, we will be in a much, much better place than we are today, than we were 12 months ago. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank 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 you. Have a good day.